It took me a while, but I was finally able to get every LEGO Fortnite bundle that's currently available and build every building that's in those bundles as well as all of the decor items. So for today's video, that's what we're going to be taking a look at. Before we jump into it, I did want to remind everybody that the vehicle update is scheduled to be released on March 26th, which is tomorrow. And here's an image that they share it with us. We should be getting new wheels as well as this driving seat with the steering wheel attached. And you can also see bumpers as well as headlights in these pictures. So we should be getting vehicles in Lego Fortnite very soon. And it looks like you can put a chest on it to sort of like give it a trunk and it should allow you to get some extra storage. But yeah, we're supposed to get a vehicle update tomorrow. I'll be sure to do a video covering that once that gets released. But like I said, for this one, we're gonna be taking a look at all of the Lego bundles that are currently available. I'm actually scared to admit how long it took me to make this video. It took an embarrassing amount of time because we built every building, every decor item. So I don't know. If y'all could drop a like on the video, it would probably help me sleep better at night. Otherwise, I, I may have just wasted a whole lot of time for no reason. Anyways, we're going to be taking a look at four different bundles. So I will leave timestamps in the description if you want to jump to a specific one. Anyways, the first bundle we're going to start off with is the only bundle I don't have, which is the Lego Starter Pack bundle. I originally wasn't planning on including it, but Big Ganja told me I should. And fortunately, he already had the starter pack and he built everything for us. So this is the first bundle we're going to take a look at. Before we do, I do want to show the skin that comes with it. It has two edit styles, one with glasses and one without. And here's what the Lego version of it looks like. But when it comes to the actual items, you get a total of 13 items. You get this llama statue, which is probably one of my favorite items in this bundle. We also got this rug as well as this bed that has unicorn horns on it or ice cream cones. I don't know. It also came with this rug as well as this wall light. And we also got a ceiling fan with the light on it. And we also got this lamp as well as this dresser. And you can store up to 10 items in it and use it for storage. We also have this seat that you can sit down on. Almost looks like a director's chair. We also have a table as well as a nightstand. You can't put anything in the small one though. We also got this unicorn horn lamp. And we also got this nightstand as well. And you can store up to eight items in this one. And those are all of the 13 items that came with the starter pack. And again, shout out to Big Ganja for forcing me to show you all this. I mean, for crafting these items for us to look at. Same difference, same thing. But yeah, that's the cheapest bundle. I believe it costs like three and a half dollars. Next up, I want to take a look at the beach house bundle. Here's what all the buildings look like from far away. And big shout out to John A for gifting us this bundle. I'm going to be honest with you all. I did not buy all the bundles and I probably wasn't going to just because I don't really feel comfortable spending that much money on Lego Fortnite. So again, big shout out to John A oh, for gifting us this bundle. Damn. And shout out to Razor for gifting us. Oh my goodness. Please leave me alone. And shout out to Razor for gifting us the Dur Burger bundle. And I guess shout out to myself for buying the Lion Knights Castle bundle. Oh my goodness. Dude, if y'all don't leave me up, I'm trying, I'm working here. I'm working on a video here. Damn. But yeah, I didn't buy all these bundles, people. We do not have enough creator code supporters for all that. Or at least not yet. Don't forget to use creator code A1. But yeah, next up, we're going to take a look at this beach house bundle. And the first building we're going to take a look at is the swimming shop. And here's everything required to build it. Here's what it looks like from the outside. And this pretty much only comes with like one big room upstairs and downstairs. First, we'll start off with the room downstairs. The only way in is through the back door. So maybe a place where you want to place some equipment or storage. And when we go upstairs, it's just pretty much the same thing. Just one big room. Oh, somebody died here. Oh my goodness. Y'all want to see a dead body? I, I didn't know this was a murder scene. Just ignore the dead body. Uh, this is just one big room up here as well. And this also has a back door. So that's what the swimming shop looks like. 
When it comes to decor items, I think I'm going to place some surfboards in here. I was thinking I may also place down some of the towels and floaties, as well as the swimming gear, which we'll see a little bit later when we take a look at the decor items. But that's what the swimming shop looks like by itself. The next one is called a lifeguard tower. And here's all the materials you'll need to build it. And this just comes with one room. So we go up here and we just have this little room up here. One thing I noticed is that when I was building this, I noticed there was some like space underneath this room. So if you want to place like a floor down here, you could place some chest and you should be able to hide some chest in that little room. But yeah, that's what the light guard tower looks like in game. Anyways, sun's getting low. I'll, uh, we'll go ahead and wait for the sun to pop back up and we'll take a look at the rest. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and wait till the sun goes up. Next building we're going to take a look at is the shore shack. And here are the resources required to build it. Uh, this is pretty much another one room building. Not really a whole lot of room for storage. I feel like you could either use this for like a bathroom or you could hang some more surfboards in here, but I don't think it's really a good building for storage. But that's what the shore shack looks like. Next building we're going to take a look at is called the hideaway. And here's all the resources required to build it. Here's what it looks like from the outside. And this also has just one room. It is a little bit bigger than the shore shack though. So that's what the hideaway looks like. We also have a building called the beach pavilion. And here's all the resources required to build it. And I would say that this is a good building to either place equipment or chest for storage because there's a lot of room and you can get in and out pretty easily. So that's what the beach pavilion looks like from the front. And here's what it looks like from the back. Oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Not you little bastards. Next up we have the little beach house. Here's everything you'll need to build it. And here's what it looks like when it's fully built. As you can tell, there's not really anything on the first floor, but there are two entrances to the second floor. One's in the back, one's in the front. We also have a balcony in the front. Oh, oh, I got stuck in the door. But here's what it looks like on the inside. We have one room right here, a little hallway, and another little room right here. And here's the back door that leads outside. We also have another room upstairs and another balcony. Oh, I got stuck in the door again. Bro, these doors are dangerous. And we just have one big room up here. So that's what it looks like on the inside. And that's what it looks like on the outside. But the biggest building and the one that costs the most is the beach house. And here's all the materials required to build it. Here's what it looks like from the outside. And we have a total of three floors. We also have a front door as well as a back door on both the first and second floor. When we go through the front door, we have, it looks like a total of three rooms on the first floor. We've got this small room in the middle and another room over here. And you can't get up to the second floor from the inside. In order to get upstairs, you gotta go outside. We also have a balcony up here. And on this floor, we just have one big room. Well, we got one big room here and we have a smaller room over here. And we also have a back door. So that's how you get to the second floor. And from here, you'll be able to get to the third floor. And on that third floor, we have another balcony. And that's what all of the beach house buildings look like. Anyways, last up, I wanna take a look at all of the decor items. And first, we're gonna start off with the furniture. First up, we have the beachy blue counter. First up, we have the beachy blue counter. First up, we have the Beachy Blue Counter Small, which costs two marble slab. We also have the Beachy Blue Counter Medium. We also have the Beachy Blue Island Medium. Here's the Beachy Blue Counter Large. We also get the, get out the way, tomato head. We also get the Beachy Blue Counter Corner. We also get the Beachy Blue Counter Sink, which you can see right here. Um... The, blue, the beachy blue folding chairs were a little expensive because they require wool fabric, but there's everything required to build it. Uh, you also need the same amount of materials for the red one, but that's what both of them look like. Same thing is true with the loungers. They also require wool fabric. There's the red one, there's the blue one, 
And here's what they look like from Outcast. I was trying to show the chair, damn it. Wait, wait what are y'all doing? Let me show the chairs. Well, y'all get the idea. But yeah, those are the materials required to craft them. We also got the half shell chair, which requires marble. Here's what you'll need in order to craft the sea green chair. Here's everything you'll need to craft the beachy blue shower. And here's what it looks like. You can't really interact with it, unfortunately. We also have a seashell shelf. And there's everything you'll need to build it. I don't think it really does anything, though. You got this little shelf with three seashells on it. <laughs> he doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> and the last furniture item is the beachy fridge. And it only holds up to six items, so not really good for storage. But that's all the furniture items that you get with the beach bundle. We also got a lot of decor items. Oh my god, another dead body. So first up we have Beachy Rug Blue Mod. And that costs two and that costs two wool fabric. Kind of expensive. We also have the Beachy Rug Blue Swirl right next to it. And that also requires two wool fabric. So those are kind of expensive. We also have Life Ring, small purple stripe. And that's how much it costs. And you have to put that one on a wall. We also have Life Ring Purple Stripe. And here's how much it costs to build it, just two wood. And you also have to put that on a wall. Next up we have Beachy Surfboard. And this is probably one of the items I'll put in the swimming shack. Last up we have the decorations. So first up we have the Beachy Blue Flippers, which costs two planks. You can also put those in the swimming shack, as well as the Beachy Diving Gear. Also has a rubber ducky. Next up we have the Life Ring Orange. And that requires two wood to build. We also have Sandcastle Four Towers, which requires 20 sand. Tabby's staring at it at the moment. Get out the way, Tabby. And next to that, we have the Sandcastle Modern, which requires 15 sand. We also have a beachy surfboard, which is the same as this one right here. The Duck Floaty cost five wood. The Llama Floaty cost six wood. Here's what it costs to make the Beach House Umbrella Pink. And here's what it looks like. We also got a beachy surfboard. This one's a little bit bigger than the previous two. We also got a boardwalk bakery cart. And here's what it looks like. Next up, we have the sandcastle tactical. And it looks like there's a turret mounted on top of it. But apparently this is a sandcastle. Next up, we have the boardwalk smoothie cart. And there's everything required for it. We also have the boardwalk popcorn cart. And there's everything you need to make that. Here's what it looks like. There's also a beach volleyball net. And this one's also kind of expensive because it costs three silk fabric. But that's what the volleyball net looks like. We also have four different types of beachy changing tints. One's yellow, another one's teal. We have one that's purple and one that's blue. I went ahead and built just one of them, the purple one. But they all require the same amount of resources. And they're all expensive because they each require five wool fabric. So that's why I only built one of them. But they all look the same, just different colors. We got another beachy surfboard green stripe. And this one costs six planks. And this is the biggest surfboard in the game at the moment. We also got a boardwalk fruit stand. There's everything required to build it. And here's what it looks like. A couple bananas with one ball. I think they got that backwards. We also got a hot dog stand, and this is also kind of expensive, but there's everything required to build it, and here's what it looks like. We also got a sandcastle fortress, which cost 70 sand, and here's what that looks like. And last up, we have sandcastle ship, which cost 100 sand, and here's what it looks like in game. And that's all the items we got with the beach house bundle. Next up, we have the Durburger bundle. The first one we're going to take a look at is the one that's called the franchise. Look how hard it is to see what you're building. Look at this. Yeah, that's why we're making this video, people, so you can see it a little bit easier. But here's everything you'll need to build the franchise. But here's all the materials you'll need to build it. It has a total of four entrances. It has a door in the back. We also have one door on the side here. And we have two doors up front, one on each side. So there's a total of four doors. Here's what it looks like on this. And you may have noticed there is nothing in here. 
Mainly because I, I wanted to show what the buildings look like before you decorate them. So, yes, I am fully aware that it's empty. But we got this main dining area here. I believe this is where you order your food. We also have another dining area here, as well as, I believe these are two bathrooms down here. Back here, you can place your grills, your ovens, your dirt burger cabinets. Uh, we also have an upstairs, and we have like a broom closet here to the right. We also have a long hallway with two small rooms at the end of it, and one big room over here. And that is everything that's in this Dirt Burger building. And I'm pretty sure that's the biggest building in the Dirt Burger bundle. And again, shout out to Razor for gifting us the Dirt Burger bundle. And shout out to Mystic for building these buildings for us. The next one we're going to take a look at is the takeout counter. And there's everything you'll need to build it. This building has a total of four entrances. We have one right here in the front. We have another one right here on the side. And we have two doors in the rear. We have one right here and another right here. So it's a total of four doors. I'm assuming this is the main dining area where you order your food. I assume you cook the food back here. And yeah, this is sort of a smaller restaurant compared to the first one. And here's the last Dirt Burger building that we get. This one's called Flagship Restaurant. See, we have one entrance in the front. Here's what it looks like from the side, total of two floors. We have one entrance in the rear and another one on the side. So it has a total of three doors. And when we walk through the front, you have the main dining area here where you order your food. You also have where you can go upstairs. I'm assuming more people can eat up here. We also have a small room up here as well. And we also have a balcony. And I guess you can make people eat out here as well. But that's everything in the front. We also have an employee area here in the back. I'll just jump over the counter. Don't mind me. We also have this employee area back here. And yeah, that's what the entire building looks like. Next thing I want to do is show the furniture we get from the Durr Burger Bundle. First up, we have the Durr Outdoor Table Small. We also have Durr Outdoor Table Large. Here are the resources required to build it. And here's what it looks like. Almost looks like a pool table. We also have the Dirt Prep Counter Small. Here's what it looks like. You can place up to four items in it. We also have the Dirt Register Counter Small. And here's what it looks like. So these are the pieces we'll be putting inside of our restaurants. But I did want to show all of the items by themselves. Next up, we have the Dirt Register Counter Medium. Here's what that looks like. We also have the Dirt Prep Counter Medium. And this one holds up to eight items. And we also have the Dirt Register Counter Corner which requires four granite, and here's what that looks like. So you can connect the counter pieces to each other to make another counter. We also have the Dur Outdoor Stool. No, not that kind of stool. And here's what it looks like. It only requires one wood, and you can sit on it. We also have the Dur Table Seating, which requires three wood. And you can sit on this as well. Next up, we have the Dur Outdoor Chair Simple, and that requires three wood and the last one is called Dur outdoor chair grand and that requires three wood and here's what that looks like we also have Dur booth seating and we also have Dur outdoor bench which requires four granite slabs we also got a Dur restroom sink we'll put that in the bathrooms we also got the Dur floor light and this one requires bright core so it is kind of expensive we also got the Dur table lamp and I'm assuming this lights up as well but there's everything required to build the table lamp. We also got a Dur Pantry Shelf Dark. Here's what it looks like. Has a water jug on it. And last up, we have the Dur Lockers, which require six planks. And you can hold a total of eight items in there. And that's all the furniture items we got with the Dur Burger Bundle. But we also got quite a few decor items. We got the Dur Napkin Holder, which requires five vines. We also got the Dur Crate, which costs three planks. We also got the Dur shipping crate. That also costs three planks. We also got the Dur rug. And this was kind of expensive. It costs three wool fabric. But I think it looks pretty cool. I think it's worth it. We also got a Dur wall sculpture that cost eight spicy burgers. And I actually had to put this one on the wall. Here's what that looks like. We also got a Dur condiment station. Only cost one wood. 
And there's what it looks like. We also got a Durr sandwich board. This also requires a few spicy burgers. We also got the Durr burger sign. This was also kind of expensive, but you can actually find these around the Lego world randomly. You may find like three or four of them, but apparently you can build your own now. So they're not really rare anymore. We also have this huge ketchup and mustard bottle. I thought it was just gonna be like a regular sized ketchup bottle. And this is how big it is in game. Well, it's got the Durr Burger marquee and here's everything required to build it. And it looks very similar to the one that we saw on top of like over here, over there, over there. It looks very similar to that. Except you can build it by itself. We also have the Durr counter register. It only costs one granite. And we also have a Durr drive through register, which looks a little bit different. We also got a drink dispenser. Here's everything required to build it. We also have the Dur exhaust vent raised, which is this one right here. We also have the Dur exhaust vent round, and that costs two wood. There's also a Dur exhaust vent square, and that costs four granite, one wood. We also have the Dur ventilation system, which costs four granite. So a lot of ventilation systems with the Dur burger bundle. We also have the Dur exhaust duct U-bend and this is one of the most expensive items out of all of the bundles. It requires seven iron bars. We also got Dur exhaust duct complete. This one was also expensive. This one costs 12 iron bars. We also got the Dur drive up menu. There's everything required to build it. We also got the Dur umbrella table. Here's the ingredients and here's what it looks like. Why are you sticking his tongue out at you? Oh, they both are. And we also have one without a table. Looks just like the other one, just without a table. We also got the Dur patio umbrella. And there's everything required to build it. So this is everything you get from the Dur burger bundle. And last up, we're going to take a look at everything we got with the Lion Knight's castle bundle. And this is by far the biggest bundle we've gotten. So I'm going to try to run through this as quickly as possible. First thing though, if you made it this far, be sure to give yourself a pat on the back. Unless you're one of those people who skipped ahead, in which case... Uh, give yourself a pat on the front, I guess. I don't know. Do whatever. It don't matter. First, let's start off with the biggest building, which is this one right here. Guys, I don't know how to explain this. It took me two days to build this building. So for those who don't know, you can't really build pre-built buildings on top of water. Even if you lay down a foundation, you can't build it on top of water. And if you want to build a pre-built building like this one, you're going to have to do it manually, step by step. The building I'm talking about is this one, Nightly Large Keep. See all the materials required to build it. Look how huge it is. Look how big this thing is. This thing is huge. It's this building right here. So basically what I did was I built this on top of the mountain up there. I would start on stage one, remember all the pieces, run down the hill and then build those pieces here. Then I would go back up, build the next set of pieces on the next stage, run back down here with those same pieces and then rebuild them down here. So that's how I was able to get a pre-built building on the water for those who are wondering. And it took me about 12 hours. But yeah, this is the first one we're gonna start off with. It's pretty much identical to the pre-built building, except for these lanterns. I added those because it was hard to see at night. But yeah, this is all the materials required for it. And there are a lot of rooms. I'll try to go through all of them. We have one door in the front. No doors on the side. We do have one door in the rear right here. We have none back here and none over here. So there's only two doors in and out. One in the front, one in the back. All right, so walking through the front door, we have the small room here. And it goes into this main area right here. And again, there are a lot of rooms here. I may get lost. Like I've never been over here before. There's a small room here hallway here. Let's see where this goes. Apparently there's a room back here. There's a hallway and some stairs. We'll go upstairs later. But if we go through this hallway, we can get back to the main room. Have another small room here, a little window. And over here we have a much larger room with a smaller room attached to it. And we have another hallway that leads to stairs that go up. And this hallway is connected to those stairs over there. So I don't know how many rooms that was, but oh, it's starting to get dark. Uh oh. So that's everything on the first floor. Let's go to the second floor. Again, we may end up getting lost here. 
But here's sort of the main area where we first came in, the front door. We have a small room here that leads to a hallway. And we wrap around the main room. We also have a door that leads to this room. And this has a balcony on the outside. There's the front door. And there's the balcony. You see, this leads to a hallway. We also have these stairs that go up to the third floor. We'll go there in a second. But yeah, these are, are the other stairs that lead up. It leads up to this room. Here are the stairs from the backyard. So yeah, that's everything on the second floor. And now we go up to the third floor. We have this nice room. And I really like the walls on here. We also have this hallway, which leads to this room. And you can get to the top of the tower from here. And we also have this area that leads over here. So we got some windows. You see the through here, through the front. Got another window. We also have stairs in this room that goes up even higher. So let's go ahead and go up there. And yeah, this is pretty much the entire building. Like I said, it had a total of 90 stages. Definitely one of the most expensive buildings in the entire game. Next up, we have the nightly workshop. And here's everything you'll need to build it. I feel like this is a good building to use when it comes to storing your equipment or if you want to use it for storage. We got this outdoor area here. I feel like you can put a lot of equipment in here like the smelter. Uh, we also have this room over here, which leads to the back. Here's the back, by the way. But yeah, those are two of the rooms. Here's another small room. You can put some items in. And we also have an upstairs. So we go up here. We have one room here, another room here with stairs that lead up to the next floor. And a very small room up here. And yeah, I'll go ahead and run around the whole thing. Here's what it looks like from the front, from the side, from the rear. And here's what it looks like from the other side. And there's only one door. This is the only door. Next up, we have the nightly small keep. And here's all the resources required to build it. Let's see, we have one door from the front. No doors on this side. No doors on this side. But we do have one door in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and enter through the front, take a look at it. This door is actually on the second floor. So we'll start off with the second floor. We got this room here couple small rooms here and in this room it leads up to the third floor so there's no way to get to the first floor from the second floor uh, we do have a small room here as well as a balcony if you want to look out and that's everything on the oh and that's everything on the second floor let's go ahead and go up to the, the next floor on this floor, we have another balcony we can get to. There's the balcony we were just at. If we go up to the top floor, we have another balcony. Oh, oh my goodness, the lag, people. Oh, whenever I get near stairs, I lag. Oh, see what I mean? Oh, oh, oh my goodness, really? And when we get to the top, you can go to this balcony here. That was rough, man. So that's what the tower looks like. I do want to show what the first floor looks like. So let's go ahead and go through here. It's the only way you can get in here, apparently, through this door. Oh, it's like jail cells down here. I built this thing and I don't even remember seeing the, oh, we are lagging so bad, people. Oh, this one actually has like a small room here and three jail cells. I'm gonna call these jail cells. That's what they look like to me. Yeah, I guess this is sort of like a prison. A medieval prison and this is the only way to get to these jail cells is through this back door I suppose you could like destroy a floor and build stairs if you want to get access to here from the second floor but wow yeah I didn't realize there were jail cells in this building and this is the nightly small keep the next one we're gonna take a look at is the nightly royal mages tower and here's everything required to build it here's what it looks like from the front it's like there's some trees growing inside there. We got a door on this side. And I believe we also have a door on this side. Yeah, we have, oh, we also have one on this side as well. And I also like how the way we get to my tower, you have to walk up this log right here. 
I really like that. All right, so when we walk through this door, this actually leads to stairs that go up, but when we go through this door, we just have this small room right here, just one room on this floor. We go to the next floor, we have a balcony here and another small room. And you can get to the top floor from here. A lot of windows along the way. And here's what it looks like at the top. So we can look out and see our big castles over there. See our bridge over there. And that's what it looks like on the inside. I do want to show what we have on the first floor as well. And let's see what's in this room. I just got a couple small spaces. I guess you could put some storage down here, but this is everything that's on the first floor of the tower. And this is the only way you can get in this room is from this side door. But yeah, that's everything you get with the tower. Now, as for the rest of the buildings, they can all be used as walls and they can also be like connected to each other. So when it comes to this piece or this or any of these first four pieces, you can actually snap all of these onto each other and make a real wall. First up, we have the nightly gatehouse. Here's everything you'll need to build it. We have this small room right here, which leads to two doors that go on both sides. And it also has an upstairs, which I'll show in a little bit. But yeah, this is pretty much the entire building. Here's what it looks like from this side. That's the entire building. The next piece we connected to it was this nightly wall piece. And you see the pieces required. But it's just this little piece right here. And again, we just snapped it on to our gate and it pretty much snapped into place. The only thing I'll point out with this is that you want to make sure you have your pieces rotated the correct way. If they're rotated the wrong way, it can cause your alignment to go off. But yeah, there's the nightly wall piece. We also have the nightly wall stairs and there's how much it costs. And this is the building right here. This one that has the stairs on it. There's also a small room down here. And again, we just connected it to the other piece using the snap feature. And we also have the nightly wall corner, which is just a corner piece. We also have a tree growing in there. Pretty much just a wall that turns into a corner. If you want to make your wall go 90 degrees, you would use that piece. And again, I do want to show what's up here. Here's what it looks like on the main gate upstairs. And we also have a few other pieces. I couldn't connect them here because, well, I should point out before you start building these wall pieces, you want to try to choose an area that has flat land or at least place down some foundations and make it flat. If the terrain goes up, you're not going to be able to use the snap and snap it on like you're supposed to. So you may want to look out for the terrain. That's why I couldn't place any pieces on this side because the terrain goes up and I couldn't snap it on. Anyways, last up, we have nightly tower and nightly tower stairs. But the same thing applies to these two buildings. You can connect those to the other buildings we just showed. So first let's start off with the nightly tower stairs. Here's what it looks like on the first floor. I believe it stops like maybe around right here somewhere. We also have a little room here. You can also go up the stairs on this building piece. And we have this little area here. And we did connect this, we used the snap feature to connect it to this nightly tower piece, which is this one right here. And here's everything you get in it. So it's basically just one room down here at the bottom. And it also has a room up here. Oh, damn stairs. It also has a room up here up top. And that's all of the buildings you get with the Lion Knight's castle bundle. I tried to build a pool here but all my villagers keep drowning in it. Also, I don't know who needs to see this, but apparently you can like go under these pieces and survive, right? So let me try to get under, there we go. You won't even die if you go under here, or at least I didn't. And I was thinking about putting like some secret rooms under here as well. I don't know if that's gonna be possible, but I was thinking about putting some secret rooms under here. Anyways, last thing we need to do is show the furniture and decor items with this bundle. First up, we have a new bed called Regal Bed. And here's what it looks like. Go ahead and sleep in it. We also have a Knight's Knitting Table. Here's what that looks like. Next up, we have the Knight's Table. Here's everything you'll need for it. Next up, we have the Knightly Formal Chair. And here's what that bad boy looks like. We also have the Knightly Simple Chair. 
And here's what that looks like. And there's what you'll need to build it. We also have the Knightly Throne. This one also requires one silk fabric. Here's what it looks like. Looks like an actual throne. Pretty cool game and chair. We also got the Knightly Privy, which I thought was a toilet, but honestly, I don't know. I don't know any. Yeah, I guess that's a toilet, a medieval toilet. But we also have a nightly toilet, so there. I guess there's two different kinds. The real gaming chair. See, we also have one nightly well. Uh, when it comes to lights, we have the nightly brazier, and this is actually a little expensive. It costs two copper bars, one torch. We also have the nightly floor torch, which is this one, and that costs one torch, two wooden rods, and we also have the nightly brazier dungeon, which is this big one right here. So those can be used as lighting sources. Oh, we also have the nightly wall torch, which we put back here. There's a small one, and there's also a larger one right here. We also have a nightly floral shelf, which we put on this wall right here. And we also have a bunch of stuff for the mage. So we have, we have this nightly bottle rack, we also have this nightly bottle rack short, which is this one. We also have the nightly potion rack, and this one has a skull on it, which I thought was pretty cool. We also have the nightly bookcase, some big books, and we also have a nightly barrel wardrobe, which you can see here, and this stores up to 10 items. And that's all the furniture that came with this castle bundle. We also got a lot of decor items, and we're going to go ahead and run through these really quick and then we'll be done. We got a nightly toilet roll, which I believe I put on the wall back here. Here it is. And honestly, I didn't know they had toilet paper back in medieval times, but apparently there's a nightly toilet roll there. We also got a bushel basket, which you can see here. We also have a well-packed crate. We also have a knight's drying rack right here. Next up, we have the knight's double rack, which is this one. We also have the nightly mop bucket. Thought this was a hot tub at first. We also got some rugs. We got this nightly rug small, which is very small. Look how tiny that is. We also have a nightly rug medium. We got a nightly rug red, as well as a nightly rug large. We also have the nightly rug red geo tassel corner, uh, geo tassel corner small and Geo tassel edged. And here's what those three pieces look like. Here's one, here's the other one, and here's the third. You will need a silk fabric to build each of those. We also got a bunch of wall pieces. We got the nightly wall banner, which is this one right here. We also have a bunch of these nightly wall sigils. And I didn't build all of them, I only built one because they're pretty much all the same thing. They just have like different banners. So I didn't build all of them. I, I am gonna go ahead and scroll through each of them. I'm pretty sure they all require the same amount of resources, but you can see the different banners on each. Didn't think I needed to build all of those because they all pretty much look the same. We also have this nightly forge set, which I thought looks pretty cool. Got some tools hanging on there. We also have the nightly masonry set, and I think this also looks cool. Has tools hanging on there as well. It is kind of expensive though. We also have a nightly wall banner, which you can see up here. We actually have two banners. Second one's over here. But yeah, this is definitely expensive. They both cost four silk fabric. We have a nightly barrel, which is this piece. We also have a regal mystery, which is this piece right here. And we also have a royal stationery, which is this one. We also got regal knitting, which is this piece right here. You see some scissors. We also have nightly spell book. It's like a guest book. And we also have the nightly castle model, which is this big castle right here. It's like a miniature castle. We also have the nightly banner railing, which is this one right here. You set that on the floor. We also have a throned statue. We also have a nightly weapon rack, which I believe is over here. We got a weapon rack and we also have another weapon rack, Regal, right next to it. So here's our two weapon racks. We also got some mannequins, and these are probably my favorite things from the Lion Knight's Castle Bundle. We got a mage mannequin. Each of these did cost one wool fabric. We also have a peasant, and we also have a ranger, and we also have a jester. So those are the materials required to build these four 
Again, we have the Jester, Ranger, Peasant, and Mage. Almost looks like a wizard, nun, Robin Hood, Harley Quinn, as I like to call them. We also got a, a knightly trough. Is that how you say it? Trough? It's where you feed your pigs, I believe. We also have a water yoke. Use that to collect water. And the last couple of pieces I'm actually pretty excited about. So we got a short nightly hitching post, which is this one right here. And we also have a much bigger hitching post, long nightly hitching post right here. And I believe you're supposed to hook up your horses to these hitching posts. That leads me to believe that we will eventually get horses in Lego Fortnite, because why else would you have these hitching posts? Anyways, that's everything that was included in every bundle that's available in Lego Fortnite. Let me know which bundle was your favorite. If there's a certain item you want, but you don't feel like getting a bundle, be sure to follow on Twitch because we have been doing streams where we give away some of these buildings from these bundles. We're allowed to give away eight every week. So if you want some free decor items or buildings, just follow on Twitch. Before I go, I do need to give a huge shout out to Big Ganja, Broken Dominoes for helping with the builds and big shout out to John A and Razor for buying me a couple of these bundles. Also, a huge shout out to everybody who's been using Creator Code A1. And shout out to you for actually making it through this entire video. Anyways, like I said, we'll take a look at the vehicle update tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. Anyways, hope y'all have an amazing day. And thanks for watching.